Guys, I hope you enjoyed the first part of this video. I'm hoping this doesn't really need much of an introduction, but welcome to Vietnam, because this is the second part of Full Metal Jacket, movie versus book. What's the difference? And now, my friends, we get to the good stuff. We get to Vietnam. Both film and book jump right to 1968, Tet, the Vietnamese Lunar New Year. Joker is now a war correspondent working for Stars and Stripes. The book Joker explains that being a war correspondent, it's a lot like being a public relations officer to the Marine Corps and the war. He also says that while on missions and operations, he's more of a rifleman than he is a journalist. Book Joker, he's only a corporal, where movie Joker, he's a sergeant. So while in Vietnam, Joker goes to a movie theater and the Marines inside watch the John Wayne movie, The Green Berets. The theater is jam-packed full of frontline infantrymen, aka grunts, and all of the grunts laugh at the film, and they don't take it seriously at all. In fact, Joker says it's the funniest comedy he and the men have seen in a long time, and reason being that the movie in real life, Green Berets, it's a really cheesy movie, and John Wayne tries to make the Vietnam War into one of his typical action cowboy films. Now, I love John Wayne, and I think his movies are the bee's knees, but Green Berets, it doesn't really work for Vietnam, and it doesn't fit his style, so I, I can totally see where the Marines are coming from in the theater, Joker runs into his old buddy Cowboy from boot camp and they catch up. This is where he meets his unit, the Less Talk Squad. So right from the beginning in Nam, we know the squad. The squad leader is Crazy Earl. He's really skinny and crazy, but he also carries around a Red Rider BB gun everywhere he goes. Movie Crazy Earl, he is seen carrying a BB gun, but it's given more importance in the book because in Full Metal Jacket, he doesn't use it and it... I mean, it kind of looks like a real gun, and I personally didn't notice that he was carrying a BB gun until it was pointed out while doing research for the film. So, Cowboy tells Joker how he's just waiting for Earl to drop dead because he's next in line to be squad leader. We meet Animal Mother, who's a muscular, huge guy and he has black, rotten teeth, and then we meet the black guy in the squad. In the movie, his name is 8-Ball. In the book, he's called Alice, but Alice, he's like the jungle bunny. He's a machine of jungle warfare. He has the ability to spot trip wires hidden in the bush. He can hear unnatural silences. He can spot booby traps, punji sticks, loose soil, footprints, and any detection of enemy presence, even if they're trying to be stealthy. He also wears a necklace that he claims has voodoo bones. It's most likely some chicken wing bones from New Orleans, but he also carries around a bag with dead enemy soldiers' feet, which he collects. In Full Metal Jacket, 8-Ball doesn't do any of that. He's just a Marine. In both movie and book, Joker works with a marine photographer called Rafterman. He's the new guy, he doesn't have much time in country, and he also has no combat experience, which he regrets. He wants to get into the field and get some trigger time. In the short timers, it's explained how Rafterman got his nickname. He got really drunk one night at the Thunderbird Club, and he climbed up on the rafters and then fell off of them, and he crashed into a general's table, knocking him and his staff over. The general gave Rafterman his personal chair, while the general and his staff sat on the floor, and then after the show, you know, the general, he walked Rafterman back to his bunk. So that's a really that's a really cool story, and it's awesome to know where that comes from. So anyway, they head back to their base, and after that, since it's Tet, the holiday, some Vietnamese celebrate by lighting off fireworks, and we see that in both mediums. The movie combines two combat scenes into one for the sake of time constraints and the plot. In the novel, Joker and Rafterman, they're hanging out, they're watching the fireworks when their position gets hammered by rockets. Joker and Rafterman, they grab their M16 rifles locked and loaded as they and the other Marines get to the defensive positions. There's some machine gun fire that opens up, but no actual attack, aside from rockets being launched at them. The Americans return mortar and artillery fire, and that's that. Now, this isn't Joker's first time in combat in the novel. It explains very well how Joker's a seasoned veteran, and he spent a lot of time in country, and his tour of duty's almost up. Movie Joker, he jokes around that he's been in combat and that he's seen some action, but it, it really doesn't seem like that. In the book, he really is a tough guy, but in the movie, he's not so much of a grunt or a tough guy. I, I personally doubt that movie Joker has much combat experience, not just because his fellow Marines mock him for lack of battle fatigue, but because in the movie's first battle, he says this. Hey, I hope they're just fucking with us. I am ready for this shit. Now, he does say that in the book as well, but it was in another scene similar to this in the film, and the context was different. What Book Joker means when he said that was, while being bombarded and taking cover from the enemy shells, he hoped the NVA were only toying with them by firing rockets, and he doesn't want them to attack because he wasn't ready or prepared to repel a ground assault, because he wasn't in any condition to do so. That, that doesn't seem to be the case in Full Metal Jacket. Joker claims that he's been in this shit, but, you know, you can draw your own conclusions. I personally just think he's full of it. So in the film, our first combat experience is Joker and his fellow war correspondents. They're sitting in their hooch. They're just having fun, making fun of each other when there's incoming enemy fire. 
The Marines grabbed their gear and dashed to battle stations. Joker mans an M60, and after preparing for battle, he and the Marines wait. A truck crashes through the main gate. The Marines open fire and completely destroy the vehicle. Then, behind it, advancing enemy communist forces breach the perimeter and they storm the gate. The Marines pump lead into anything that moves and totally kills all the hostiles on the perimeter. The attack ends really quickly and it was basically a suicide mission. Now back to the novel, Joker and his fellow war correspondents are briefed by their commanding officer, Major Lynch, about the severity of their situation. He explains the scope of the enemy activity all over South Vietnam. The Tet Offensive has begun. The movie features a similar scene where Joker's commanding officer, Lieutenant Lockhart, gives them the rundown of the offensive. Charlie's hit every major military target in Vietnam and hit them hard. In the novel, Major Lynch sends Joker to Phu Bai to meet up with Captain January just because that's his assignment, whereas in the movie, Joker makes a wise-ass remark to his LT, and he sent the Phu Bai out of spite. In both mediums, Raptor Man volunteers to go with Joker so he can get some combat experience. That's when they fly to Phu Bai, and in the book, the characters merely just take a plane and touch down. A military police officer tries to force Joker and Raptor Man to fill sandbags for him, and Joker's like, I don't think so. He refuses, and he pulls a gun on the MP. In Full Metal Jacket, they take a helicopter, and they watch a door gunner mercilessly murder civilians with an M60 while shouting. <laughs> then the door gunner goes on to explain how he's murdered a lot of Vietnamese people, and he justifies that by claiming they're all Viet Cong. This does appear in the book, but in a different scene. However, the door gunner isn't wearing any military-issued clothing. He's in an unbuttoned Hawaiian shirt and nothing else, so he's basically naked, and he only shoots one person, and it's a Vietnamese farmer. He doesn't talk to Joker or Rafter Man, or, you know, acknowledge them at all. The only sort of verbal exclamation he makes in the helicopter ride was a little chuckle after his M60 ripped the farmer to bits. So in the book, Joker, he makes it to Fubai, and we actually we actually meet the character of Captain January. He's promoted to the rank of sergeant, and Joker is very adamant about not wanting a new promotion. In fact, he doesn't even acknowledge his new rank after being promoted. He still refers to himself as a corporal. Anyway, much like in the movie, Joker and Rafter Man go to their hooch, and they shoot the shit with Payback and some other war correspondents. This exchange in the in the novel, the dialogue is, is basically the same, word for word, in the movie. Payback brags about his combat experience and how he's on Operation Hastings. He tells Rafter Man about the Thousand Yards there, and then he mocks Joker all in good fun. There's even a weird scene in the novel where the bored marines catch rats and lights them on fire. Then they hold the phony funeral for them and they all sing the Mickey Mouse march. That's when the NVA shells their positions with rockets and mortar fire. Much like in the movie, the characters grab their weapons and they run to defensive positions. They get shelled for some time, but there's no actual ground attack. And the Americans open up with some M60 machine gun and M79 grenade launcher fire, but no actual attack. And after the bombardment, they all go back to their hooch and they talk about what just happened. That's when Rafter Man shows them he's holding a piece of human flesh that he took off the corpse of a dead marine who died in the bombardment. Then he puts it in his mouth and swallows it in front of everybody. So like I mentioned earlier, the movie combines those two combat scenes into one for time constraints, but Rafter Man never eats human flesh in the film. The next day, the two hitch a ride on a helicopter to Hue City. Then they hop on a tank and it takes them into the city itself. But the tank driver's a clumsy fool and he runs over a child. Apparently, it's not the first time he ran someone over. And after that, Joker's able to find Cowboy's platoon commander, Lieutenant Shortround. He's called that because he isn't very tall. In the movie, Joker and Rafter Man, they land in an LZ on the outskirts of the city and they run into Cowboy's platoon commander immediately. And his name is Touchdown, named for his former days as a football player at Notre Dame. Touchdown takes the two reporters to the site of a mass grave. The dead are South Vietnamese civilians who were victims of the NVA's political re-education program. In the book, the mass grave scene is saved for later, and Joker finds Cowboy Squad partying in the Citadel. The movie features this scene very much the same. Joker and Cowboy, they're happy to see each other. All the Marines are excited to be in the presence of reporters who work for Stars and Stripes, and Crazy Earl shows Rafter Man, a dead NVA soldier propped up for a photograph. And Joker and Animal Mother get into a verbal joust in front of everybody. The book establishes Animal Mother as a macho asshole. He brags about murdering civilians, and he tells the squad how he tried to rape a 13-year-old girl. He's very much more hostile and belligerent in the novel, and no one likes him because he goes around picking fights with any and everyone. He and Joker have a huge rivalry in the book, whereas in the movie, they only, they only really get on each other's nerves in two scenes. And besides that, like I said, in the film, Mother and Joker, they work fine together. In the book, during Joker and Mother's argument, they point their weapons at each other, and no one tries to stop Joker from firing his weapon because no one likes Mother. Anyway, Lieutenant Short Round, he breaks up the fight and he threatens to beat up Animal Mother and warns him never to murder another civilian. The Marines are called into action and move into the city. It's bombed out and the buildings are skeletal remains of what they used to be and they're littered with bullet holes. Joker comments that since most of his time in country was spent in the jungle and how he and nearly everyone else has no urban warfare experience, he feels like a recruit again. 
As they advance through the ancient Imperial City, jets fly above and they drop napalm canisters. The Marines come under fire from the Communist forces and they attack an NVA position. During the battle, Joker is wounded by an RPG round. He didn't take shrapnel, but the concussion blast knocks him out for hours. While he's unconscious, Joker has a really bizarre dream sequence where he believes his limbs are blown off and that he's either dead or dying. His mind and his body, they have a debate on whether or not they want to live or die. The body wants to stay dead, but the mind wants to return to life. Eventually, the mind wins the argument and Joker wakes up. Cowboy tells Joker he was unconscious and that during the battle that we didn't actually get to see, Lieutenant Short Round, he was fragged by Animal Mother while he was trying to save a wounded man. Joker's M16 was destroyed, Crazy Earl goes nuts, and he attacks an NVA machine gun position with his BB gun. Which out of the pure shock of a man using a toy against them in battle, the NVA soldiers were momentarily stunned, but then they gun him down. THE Rock gets his head blown off by a sniper. Now this sniper fired on the marines while in a graveyard, shooting at their feet and hands. A few marines were wounded and exposed in the open, but Lieutenant Short Round ordered his men not to try to attempt to save the wounded because the sniper was purposely disabling them, trying to lure more marines into the open. Many of the marines were very upset by Short Round's orders. Animal Mother tried to disobey, but Short Round pulled him back and smacked him in the face in front of all the others. This is where Mother frags him, while Short Round had his back turned. Eventually, the sniper finishes the marines off, and they pull out of the area. Cowboy's the new squad leader, and he wants to get revenge on that sniper, who Alice reports is still out there. Cowboy chucks Joker at Grease Gun and says lock and load. Now, the film changes and omits many elements of that sequence. The Marines, they are sent out into the city, but they're advancing behind tanks. They take enemy fire, which kills touchdown. The squad advances and comes under small arms fire from the enemy. They return fire and secure the area and roll the tanks forward. After that, the Marines are all interviewed by camera crews. They all give their individual opinions on the war and their combat experience. A lot of the things they say comes from the novel itself. Then after that, the men get propositioned by a young prostitute. Then they go on patrol where the squad leader Crazy Earl is killed by a booby trap, unlike his novel counterpart. That's when Cowboy's promoted to the new squad leader after Sergeant Murphy verbally tells him over the radio. So this is where we get to the infamous sniper battle. Now, the movie actually combines two different events from the book. In the movie, the squad is still on patrol and they get lost. Eight Ball tries to scout the area ahead of them so the squad can change direction. That's when he gets shot in the leg by a sniper and the whole squad opens fire, shoots at buildings ahead of them. Cowboy tells him to save their ammo, but every time the sniper shoots at Eight Ball, they keep shooting at random and Cowboy has no control over his squad. Against orders, Corman Doc J tries to save Eight Ball but gets shot himself and the two are unable to stand up or get to safety. Cowboy tries to call in for tank support but to no avail. He orders the squad to pull out and abandon Doc J and Eight Ball. Animal Mother refuses and charges in to save his comrades. Doc J gives up the sniper's position and they all get mowed down. Mother convinces Cowboy to move up the squad to attack the sniper. In the process, Cowboy accidentally exposes himself and gets fatally shot. I, I you. Cowboy dies in Joker's arms and the Marines enter the sniper's building. They all split up and Joker finds the Viet Cong sniper and tries to fire, but his rifle jams. The sniper tries to gun Joker down, and just in the nick of time, Raptor Man saves Joker by unloading his rifle into the sniper. Everyone gathers around, and they all look in amazement that the sniper is a girl, a pre-teen girl at that, and she's howling in pain, and Mother is now in command of the squad. He tells the men to move out and leave the girl to suffer, but Joker doesn't want to leave it to rot, so he mercy kills her, and the squad marches off into the night, singing the Mickey Mouse march. Joker admits how he's happy to be alive despite what all he's been through and all he's seen, and that's when the movie ends. So like I mentioned earlier, the book itself has three distinct sections. The movie only features the first two sections of the novel, but combines elements of the second and third part for the finale. So this is how the sniper battle happens in the book. Last we left off, Joker regains consciousness after being wounded in battle. The Marines are mad that they're ordered to pull out of the area so the Arvin soldiers, that's the South Vietnamese army, can take over operations and liberate the city for political reasons. To further add insult to injury, the American flag that waved over the city of Hue after the hard-fought battle, it was lowered and taken down and replaced by a South Vietnamese flag. This angers the squad because they believe the Arvin didn't contribute to the fight. Cowboy orders the squad to move out and to attack the sniper, who killed many of the Last Talk squad. While marching into battle, the Marines, they encounter a tank, they wave it down and ask if it can assist them with flushing out the sniper. The tank commander agrees, and they all set up their positions. Animal Mother opens fire with his M60 machine gun is covering fire. The squad moves up, and the tank just starts blowing buildings up in the surrounding area. As the Marines storm the area, they open fire on all the buildings around them. They enter structures, and they clear them room by room by lobbing grenades in them. Cowboy gets wounded by the sniper, and he, he gets knocked out. During the intense fight, Joker and Rafter Man have the sniper pinned down. The sniper shoots at them, and the two can't expose themselves without being hit. This all happens on the building's rooftop, and then the tank fires on the building and Joker falls to the floor, and the building's now ruined. 
The sniper is out of sight and has vanished. Raptor Man slides down the ruins of the building to search for the sniper. Joker is unable to stand up due to his injuries from the fall. And then, to Joker's horror, a foot stomps on his chest and pins him to the floor Captain Morgan style. And it's the sniper. The sniper looks down and takes notice of how helpless Joker is. They lock eyes and Joker is amazed because this is the first time he sees an NVA or a Viet Cong soldier up close. He usually either saw them from really, really far away or when they were dead. So. Joker, he's like, wow, this is amazing. And he also notices that the sniper is a 15-year-old girl. He describes her as, quote, a Eurasian angel, end quote. And he says she's drop-dead beautiful, and he's enamored with her beautiful hair and her eyes. Joker, he resigns himself to his fate. He knows there's nothing he can do. But Rafter Man rushes back to save Joker. Rafter Man shoots her many times with his automatic rifle. She falls off the roof of the building, and then... Joker and Rafter Man signal to the tank that they got the sniper, and then the tank leaves. They all go down to the street to greet the other Marines. Cowboy shows Joker his wounds. He has a bullet hole in his ear and an arm wound, but he's okay, and he's gonna make a he's gonna make a full recovery. They all see Rafter Man standing over the sniper while drinking a Coca Cola. They all gather around her body, and she's gravely injured but still alive. She's praying out loud, and again, like in the movie. Joker questions what they should do with her. Animal Mother says to leave her, but Joker thinks it's wrong. Mother gets in Joker's face and says that Cowboy's down, and that the squad is now his, and since Animal Mother's a sergeant, you gotta do what I say. But Joker's also a sergeant, so there's a little bit of a power struggle between the two, and ultimately, he, Joker says he doesn't want to run the squad, he merely suggests they can't leave this girl in the condition she's in. Mother says the only way he'll allow any sort of mercy is if Joker shoots her. He initially refuses, but then he changes his mind when he locks eyes with the girl, and he has a moment of bloody, morbid intimacy. He raises his grease gun and shoots her in the eyeball, killing her nonchalantly, unlike in the movie where he has a little bit of an inner struggle and somewhat hesitation. Everyone's in awe of his brutality. They all comment on how tough he is, and they're like, Joker, you're a hard dude. But Animal Mother gets angry and unimpressed. He takes out his machete, and he chops off the girl's head, and he shows it around, yelling, I'm the tough one, not Joker. And then he, sh he just throws the, sh throws the girl's head in the ditch. Now, this actually was going to be in the movie. This was in the original script, but it was ultimately cut. I'm not sure if they actually filmed this or not. I couldn't find anything, and trust me, I've looked for ages, but... Yeah, so Animal Mother throws the head away and he feels insecure. In his mind, Joker killing the sniper upstaged his toughness and he gets in Joker's face and he's like, hey, Short Round never saw the frag that killed him. And then he takes a grenade and he pushes it into Joker's chest and he uses this as a threat. And he says no one messes with the Animal Mother. And after that, Rafter Man unloads his rifle into the dead girl. Alice chops off her feet with a machete and stuffs them into his bag. Then he slices off her finger to take a gold ring from it. Rafter Man then takes souvenirs off the dead girl, such as her SKS rifle and an NVA belt. The novel goes into graphic detail in the disturbing descriptions of the state of the corpse on how what once was a beautiful girl is now a mutilated mess of what used to be a human being. Rafter Man is all excited over his first kill and poses for numerous photographs with the mutilated remains. After that, there is some fighting in the city of Huey, but for the most part, the battle is over. Now this is where the movie would end, but the book continues. The marines, on their way out of the city, they loot the imperial palace and they move out. The Lestock squad witnesses helicopter gunships mercilessly mow down enemy soldiers on a distant island in the Perfume River, and one of the communist soldiers actually manages to shoot down a chopper. The squad watches in awe, and this is when Joker and Rafter Man go to the mass grave site to take pictures of the dead civilians murdered by the NBA. After that, Joker says his goodbyes to Cowboy, and they leave, and while walking down the road, a tank actually runs over Rafter Man and splits him in half, killing him. Joker waits all night with the corpse of Rafter Man until the Navy corpsman takes him away. Joker then gets reprimanded by a colonel for wearing a peace symbol. This this does appear in the movie, but it's shown while Joker and Rafter Man photograph the mass grave. In the movie, the colonel just disapproves of the peace symbol. In the book, Joker is harassed by the officer. He forces Joker to stand at attention while holding over 60 pounds of gear. Then he demands Joker takes it off, but he doesn't. And also, Joker's not really saying much. Eventually, the colonel drives away, but the next day, when Joker returns to his headquarters, his commanding officer tells him that that colonel reassigned Joker to Delta Company 1-5 as a rifleman. He's no longer a combat correspondent, but to Joker's luck, he's put into Cowboy Squad. Now we get to the final act of the novel, which was excluded from the movie. The final act takes place in the jungles around Quezon. The film doesn't feature the jungle, but there is a quick three-second aerial view of it while Joker's in a helicopter. However, the Lush Talk Squad is on patrol in the jungle around the base at Quezon, beyond the perimeter. And beyond the perimeter, there's this black skull posted into the ground and they nicknamed it Sorry Charlie. Sorry Charlie is most likely a dead NVA soldier who was charred by napalm. The squad goes down a trail in the jungle and they all walk past a sign that says all hope abandon ye who enter here. They encounter another marine squad returning from patrol and they say that they haven't they haven't seen any enemies, they've encountered no resistance and no one's been in combat. So 
Joker goes into detail on how awful jungle warfare is. He says the real enemy is the jungle. He further states that booby traps account for the most squad casualties, and sometimes the Viet Cong will place poorly concealed booby traps on the trail, so soldiers will walk off of it to avoid it, only to, to walk into a more deadly trap. And Alice, he's walking on point. He holds his arm up and he stops the squad. He tells Cowboy how he's got a bad feeling and thinks that something's up. And being that Alice is like the god of jungle warfare, he has the sixth sense to, to see beyond, and everyone is now very cautious. He warns the squad that danger is ahead. Eventually, the squad takes a quick break, and Animal Mother, he and Joker go at it again. The rest of the squad, they talk about how many days are left on their tour of duty. Alice is basically a week away from going home, so out of all the short timers in the squad, he's the most senior. Animal Mother then turns his attention to the new guy and starts to pick on him, but the two play cards while talking. Mother tells a story about how he flipped off a colonel and was demoted to private. He also tells a story about how he stole a car and got arrested, and the judge gave him an option to either go to prison or serve in the Marines. The new guy tells Mother how he volunteered, and he's happy to protect freedom. Mother gets all angry and tells him not to be naive, and they don't kill for freedom. In fact, this exchange does exist in the movie, only it was Rafter Man and Mother after the second battle scene. And again, the dialogue is almost word for word. Then once more, Joker and Mother get into another fight, but Joker loses his temper and he pulls a knife on Animal Mother. Joker calms down, and both he and Mother, they ease their tensions and move out. Joker, he salutes Animal Mother constantly while on patrol in case enemy snipers are in the area and can see him, logic being that they'll confuse Mother for an officer and shoot him. While on the trail, Alice hears an ominous snapping noise that scares away the birds. Alice senses danger. The squad gets low and they're contemplating on whether or not they should move forward. They hear the noise again. It sounds like a branch falling, but Alice is sure it's a rifle bolt clicking. The squad is completely halted. Cowboy doesn't like the standstill and orders Alice to move forward, but he's concerned and doesn't move. The radio man runs up to Cowboy saying the commanding officer wants an update on the squad's position. The pressure's on the squad to move out, not only from the commanding officer, but the longer they stay in the same position on the trail, the chances of an enemy ambush, they're increasing and they're in a bad spot. They're really exposed. They become more vulnerable with each passing moment. Cowboy once more pressures Alice to move, and he reluctantly and hesitantly does. Alice walks forward into a clearing, then a loud bang rings out. Alice is hit, and he falls falls forward, landing all rigid. All the others hit the deck and they get as low as possible to avoid being hit. Alice is down and unresponsive. The corpsman Doc J moves up. They can't see the position of the enemy sniper. The radio man insists to Cowboy that he needs to talk to the colonel, but he ignores that and orders the radio man to call for a gunship and a medevac. The radio man, he goes delirious and starts screaming incoherent nonsense to Cowboy and the colonel on the other end of the radio. Neither Cowboy or the colonel can understand what the radio man is trying to say, but before the confusion can be cleared up, the sniper fires and destroys the radio, almost injuring the operator. Joker grabs him and rushes him behind a huge rock. Meanwhile, Doc J and Cowboy are arguing. Cowboy says Alice is out in the open and can't be reached. Mother sets up his M60 machine gun. The sniper fires at Alice again. Alice is still alive, but in pain, and he has a wound on his foot, so he can't get up. Animal Mother opens fire with his machine gun. Many of the others in the squad, they join in, and they open fire, shooting into the empty jungle, firing at anything, chucking grenades, and blowing holes in the foliage. Cowboy orders his men to cease fire, which they all obey except Animal Mother. Alice tries to crawl back to the squad out of the clearing. He reaches out to try to get to Cowboy, but the sniper shoots off his hand. Doc J and Cowboy literally have a wrestling match because Doc J, he's trying to get to Alice and Cowboy's holding him back. Eventually, the Doc breaks free and he dashes to save Alice, who only has eight days left before being able to go home. His tour of duty's almost up. So, like I said earlier about the movie, it combines these two sniper battles into one. You know, we see how Alice is wounded and the others are firing blindly into the opening. Cowboy's struggling to assert his authority over the squad and how he knows it's suicide to try to save their fallen comrade. So, Back in the jungle, Doc J runs into the clearing and makes it to Alice, and before he can give him aid, he gets shot in his leg, which exposes his bone. Now, the Doc is down. Cowboy throws a smoke grenade into the clearing while Doc J tries to stand up and drag Alice, but he gets his other leg's foot shot, and now he's totally immobile. However, the Doc is able to give Alice some morphine and treat some of his wounds. But the sniper shoots Doc J in the hand, and now he can't move it. Unfortunately, the smoke grenade thrown by Cowboy obscures the view of the clearing, and He's totally indecisive on what to do. He finally says the squad has to pull out. I know it's a shitty thing to do, but we can't refuse to accept the situation. And much like in the movie, the squad, they're all angered at this call. Cowboy's leadership is called into question, and he says there's nothing that can save their comrades. In the movie, Cowboy says an interesting phrase. I've seen this before! 
that sniper's just trying to suck us in one at a time! And Book Cowboy says the exact same thing. He says that he's indeed seen the situation happen before, and he reminds them of the sniper battle in the city of Hue, where the female sniper in the graveyard did the exact same thing. So, Book Cowboy actually has merit behind his words, and the squad knows that he's right. The sniper's only wounding the marines to try to draw more into the killing zone. However, despite the squad knowing full well that Cowboy's absolutely right about the situation, they refuse to move out on his command. Then, out of nowhere, totally out of left field, the new guy gets up, screams, get some, runs into the opening and firing his weapon like a maniac, like he's, like he's John Wayne. And then he manages to reach Doc J, but he gets himself shot and he falls down. And then Cowboy points out that that's the reason why trying to help is futile. And they all prepare to move, Mother refuses, and Cowboy orders him to walk on point. Mother then picks up his machine gun and aims it at Cowboy, and there's a, a tense stare down between the two. Cowboy sighs and tells Joker that he's now in charge of the squad, and to move them out and make Mother walk on point. He gets close to Joker and whispers to never turn your back on Animal Mother. He's a maniac and a killer, and he reminds Joker how Animal Mother murdered Short Round while he had his back turned when no one was paying attention. After a sort of goodbye and hesitation and pressure from Joker trying to convince him to do otherwise, Joker, he finally promises to take the squad and move them out when it's all over. And that's when Joker finally accepts that he's a sergeant and he takes responsibility for his rank. Meanwhile, in the clearing, Doc J tries to give aid to the new guy who's dying, but he gets shot many times, mostly in the face. Mother opens fire again with his machine gun. Cowboy drops his Stetson and he drops his shotgun and throws another smoke grenade. He pulls out his pistol and runs into the clearing. The whole squad is hypnotized watching the crazy scene unfold. The sniper, he starts to laugh in an eerie dark way, but no one can pinpoint his location. He stops laughing and the rest of the squad watches intently. Cowboy shot in his legs and falls down. They hear a pistol firing in the clearing, and then the radio man screams out in horror that he just saw Cowboy kill Doc J and the new guy. The smoke clears, and they see Cowboy in an act of mercy shoot Alice in the back of the head. Cowboy then tries to kill himself, but before he can turn his pistol on himself, the sniper shoots it out of reach. Joker tells the squad to move out. Mother ignores and thinks there's still a way to save Cowboy. Joker stands in front of Mother, but at this point, Mother goes crazy, and enraged, he aims his machine gun at Joker and verbally threatens to gun him down. And Joker fully believes him. He turns his back to Mother, and Mother literally, he's poking Joker in the back with his M60, and Joker fully expects Mother to kill him while all the others just stand there and watch. Joker aims his grease gun at Cowboy and the two lock eyes. Cowboy is scared, and he knows exactly what's about to happen. Joker reflects on how he barely knew Cowboy, but that was his best friend in the Marine Corps, and he even remembers the first time they met at Paris Island. Cowboy, knowing full well what is about to come, yells out, I never liked you, Joker. I never thought you were funny. And then, bang! Joker fires a single shot, and it hits Cowboy in the eyeball, blowing his brains out, killing him. Mother lowers his gun, and everyone is silent now, and they all hate Joker. They know what he did was the right thing to do by putting Cowboy out of his misery and preventing others from going out into the clearing, but they hate him, and they'll never see him the same way again. Joker says he's never felt more alive. He picks up Cowboy Stetson, and he orders the squad to move back down the trail. They all obey, and they say nothing as they go back. They pass the charged skull on the post, sorry Charlie, and they all say nothing, and that's where the book ends. Now, there are a lot of similarities between this final battle and the Hue fight, like two of the characters lured into the open and wounded many times by an unseen sniper, and Cowboy struggling to control his squad. Major differences would be obviously how Joker kills Cowboy to put him out of his misery, rather than the sniper shooting him and him dying in his friend's arms. Also, in this final confrontation, the Marines, they abandon the area and they don't kill their enemy. So, the book ends with a really grim and bleak outro. The squad lost four of their men, three of which were near the end of their tour of duties, and technically, they all died not from the sniper, but from American bullets. And remember when I mentioned earlier in the video that in boot camp, they had a combat simulation where Joker had to be a sniper and is killed by Cowboy? Well, that was the foreshadowing to this battle. That foreshadowed the ending. But anyway, guys, there we have it. Full Metal Jacket versus The Short Timers. Both are really fantastic works of art. It's very unfortunate that the book is out of print and many people won't be able to experience its geniusness. But in the end, both works make for some of, if not the greatest works of fiction about the Vietnam War. Were you surprised at some of the differences? Well, let me know and comment below. Want to see more of these movie versus book comparisons and have a suggestion for a future video? Comment that too. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like and drop a subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next, well, sort of, unpopular opinion.